Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name is Jim. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once you've arrived, there are links to Amazon Music Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more. When we were first married, we had a house up by the ski area that we rented from an old couple. It was a nice little house, perfect for us. We didn't have any children yet or anything. And the couple decided they'd like to sell it, and they tried to sell it to us. And I wouldn't bite because it was not on a rock or concrete foundation. It was on, like, railroad ties. There are no termites in that country. So it would probably been safe. It was an older house, and it probably was that way forever and ever. But still, I passed. I didn't want to live in that little town anyway. But we did move to my hometown. And we bought a trailer house and we lived there a little over a year and sold that trailer for double of what we paid for it and used that money to remodel a house that we had bought in town, an older home. And so it worked out pretty well for us. It really did. When we moved to the Midwest, we rented an old house up by Ken's dad's office. Kim had gone to work for her dad once we moved there. And so she could just walk down the street and be at work. But the house was old and the guy wasn't going to put any money into it. And my wife was very frustrated with the flooring and the general shape the house was in. And so we found another house that we rented from an old gal that I had to go to her house and pay her rent every month. And she was always just laying on the couch and wouldn't get up even to answer the door. And if anything ever went wrong, she would fix it. But she'd send some guys that really didn't know how to do much or were kind of scruffy and left a mess and stuff like that. And we had no control over it. So we finally bought a house down southwest of the Kansas City metro area. And that house lasted us through all the years my kids were in junior high and high school before we moved out here in the country. That house served us well. That is a fact. While we lived in that house in town, I decided that it'd be a good thing for me to own a couple rental units. So we bought a duplex in that town, and it was nice. It was both sides had about 13 or 1,400 square feet. They were both three-bedroom, two-bath with a full basement and one car garage. And we owned both sides of the duplex. And I thought that that was a very nice place. Within a year, we bought another duplex in the town next to us. And it was a smaller duplex. They were two bedroom, one bath, no basement, one car garage. And I really thought that that three bedroom was a much nicer place. Well, that three bedroom, gave us nothing but problems through no fault of the building itself. It was just the clientele that I kept passing to be the tenants there. I had nothing but problems in that one. I never really did have any long-term tenants that were any good. I had a couple people that just lived there one year in their lease and then moved out and they were good. But I had situations that I can't even believe. If I watched it on a movie, I would tell you that that's truly just fiction. For an example, one time this gal and her two teenage sons, they moved out, broke their lease, but only about a month or so. I went in to check it out. She didn't even wait for her damage deposit. And it was infested with cockroaches. I had to get an exterminator to come. And I had never seen a situation. They were just all over the ceilings, all over the walls. We had to clean out the air ducts for the heating system and everything. It was terrible. There's a second one that I had to evict these people. And it was so bad that they wouldn't leave and were barricaded in. And finally, I called the sheriff's department. And we met one morning out there. And I waited for the sheriff's department before I did anything. And they came and they told me to step back, get out into the street, that they never know what they're going to find when they walk into a place like that. And they went in, I gave them a key to the place, and they went in with their guns drawn. About five minutes later, they gave me the okay, 
And I walked in and I asked them why I had to wait out. And they said, well, they've had situations where people were waiting in the closet with a loaded gun, jump out of the closet at them. Situations like that. They didn't want me to be harmed. Place had been abandoned and it was truly a messed up deal. I had another eviction I had to go through and kicked them out and they left not wanting their deposit back. Of course, they owed me several months of rent. That's why they got evicted. I found a car motor in a bathtub there. Had to get a couple people to help me get it out of the bathtub. I garnished those people's wages and it was amazing. They would switch jobs to not have to pay the garnishment. But I knew a guy that knew them and they didn't know I knew him. And he would tell me where they went to work. So then I track them down again and garnish their wages again. We did that for quite a while and I did finally get the garnishment all paid off on it. That was good and I was fortunate, but they really messed her up, I'll tell you what. I had one girl once burnt the whole back deck down. Nice deck out there, you could sit in easy chairs and grill a hamburger and whatever and she burnt that sucker down. I went over there and inspected, she was moving out and there's some guy there so I started, you know, saying, well, you got to pay for this. And him and I kind of got in an argument. Finally, it was determined that he was her stepdad and he was a deputy sheriff for the sheriff's department. Well, long story short, he built a new deck for me. And so there was no legal action took place. So I was, I was good with that, with the new deck. Just glad they didn't burn the whole place down. Or am I? The craziest one I ever had is I always have a no dogs, no cats policy on these rentals. And one time, this gal was quite late with her rent and she wouldn't answer the phone. So I did a drive-by. Didn't look like anything was happening around there, but there was a cat in the window. So shouldn't be a cat in the window. So I called my lawyer and asked him how I should proceed. So I took a friend with me as a witness and we let ourselves in. And hello, 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 anybody home? Nobody, anywhere. Place was cold, it was in the winter, no electricity going. My friend went over and opened the fridge door and immediately the whole area stunk. It smelled like something dead. The fridge was full of maggots. It had been quite a while since she was there. Everything was there, all of her furniture, all of her clothes, everything. So I proceeded how my lawyer advised me to do with letters and legal notices in the local paper and all of that. Let her sit for three months and nothing. The neighbor said that she had pawned her kids off on somebody came and got her kids and she ran off with some guy in the middle of the night. So I let it sit for another month. We got that fridge out of there. And lo and behold, one day I went in there again and checked things out. Everything was the same, except that there was like poop around on the floor and it was full of seeds. What is this? It looked like a wild animal, you know, raccoons and coyotes and things. Their poop has seeds in it and it just made me think that there must be a raccoon or possum or something in here. So I called animal control again. They came and got the first cat. So he set out some live traps they were cages. So a couple days later, I went in there and there was a cat in one of the traps. I called animal control and he came and got it. What had happened is he found some bird seed and been living off the bird seed. He was just as skinny as could be, probably almost starved to death. I don't really know what he's doing for water, I guess, in the toilets. So finally, we hired a couple kids and my wife and those two kids. We got a construction dumpster out in the driveway and they emptied everything into there. Not before we had a garage sale and an auctioneer came to see what he wanted and couldn't get rid of much. So we threw that lady's life history away. Her wedding dress, her wedding pictures, her family pictures, all this stuff. Her whole life she had just abandoned. Well, it was about six months after that my lawyer gave me a call and said that that lady had surfaced in the form of some lawyer called her and she's threatened to sue me for throwing all of her stuff away. And so I said, well, let's just wait and see what happens. So a couple of weeks later, got a call from my lawyer again and her lawyer called her. So 
I said, well, just call her lawyer, see what's going on, see what we can do here. I'm not going to give her her demands. She was demanding like $20,000 or something. And so my lawyer called, called me back, said, well, this lawyer said that this gal comes in and starts yelling and screaming and threatening until he makes a call to my lawyer. Then she goes away. Then she came back two weeks later and did the same thing, so he calls again. Okay, well, what's your suggestion I should do? He told me I should write a letter. We'll send it to that lawyer and he can give it to her next time she showed up. So I wrote a letter explaining how the animal control, the police department there in town, is looking for her. How I spent X amount of dollars getting rid of her stuff and all the past rent she owed. And that that's fine. I will countersue her for amount larger than what she was demanding from me. So bring it on. Never heard from her again. What a sad state of the human psyche that is. This woman pawns off her kids, somebody, leaves with some man and leaves everything. All of her memories and mementos, plus furniture and clothing and household goods behind and expect me to sit on them and take care of them for her. Anyway, I had one tenant that left and left holes in the walls and the doors and a car, about a 10-year-old car in the driveway. No license plates or anything. So I called the sheriff's department again and they checked it out and it wasn't stolen, wasn't reported stolen or anything. What am I going to do with this car? I do not want this car. Just getting it licensed to be a nightmare. So I called my lawyer one more time. And he knew a guy that knew a guy. And the car just disappeared one day. No charge. Thank you. The other duplex that I own, the two bedroom, one bath, on a slab, I hardly ever had any problems at all. It just cooked long, cooked long. It was fine. Until one day, one day, the lady called and started accusing me. She'd lived there for about three years, worked at a local hospital of all things, that her place was infested with bugs and what was I going to do about it? So I sent the exterminator there again and a few hours later the exterminator called me and said, it's not the place's fault, she brought in bed bugs. And go, what? Bed bugs? Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I just marched down to my realtor and I put the place for sale right then and there and never stepped foot in the place ever again. I sold both of those places. Those did a wonderful job for me though. Besides all the problems that I had with the one building, it really was, both of those units were really a good investment. I had one more unit that I'm not sure what kind of investment it was. It was called the Gooby House. I went down to a town south of us to a little auction for this little bitty house. And nobody would bid as high as the auctioneer was starting at, so everybody walked off. So I caught up with the auctioneer afterwards and I offered him something significantly less for that house as is. And I'd walked through the house and I knew what I was getting. But so he went over to the owners and we went and did the deed right there. Went right over to the title company and closed the sale right then and there. Within an hour, I owned that puppy. And the reason I called it the Gooby House was there was a lady there probably in her 50s. She had two grown boys that lived with her. Plus, she had about 50 dogs and I don't know how many cats. They were mostly in kennels, but it stunk to high heaven and it was nasty and bad. Well, I was so concerned for those people because they are obviously not all there, to put it kindly. So I put some smoke alarms in the place, make sure that, you know, at least they had smoke alarms. But she paid her rent, cash money. It's like she'd stick it out. I'd have to go see her and she'd stick the money out and I'd go to take it and she kind of would have a tug of war between these bills and finally she'd let go. And this is a little game we played all the time. Her oldest boy was the negotiator. Well, you know, you ought to fix that. You know, this place doesn't smell so good. Okay, whatever. The youngest boy, the youngest boy, he had to be in his 30s. 
he uh, he'd help me like when I put the smoke alarms up he he was my helper one day I went to collect the rent the place was abandoned and there's a sign on the door saying it was condemned by the city so <laughs> what and so I didn't know what to think so I called the city and I asked for the guy that signed the condemnation notice and he told me a story how they uh, raided her because she had all these animals and it was against code and stuff and so while they were there they just condemned the building for good measure he had heard that the sewer whenever you flush the toilet just kind of ran out under the house so okay so I got the place cleaned up I proved that it was going into the city sewer and they took the condemned sticker off of the house I tried to rent it and all that was looking at were gooby people too so I turned around and sold that house and the guy dozed it and built a nice little house there so I did okay on that one also I really did some of those renters became near and dear to my heart a little two bedroom one bath there's always that building that I have three renters one Janie she would have stayed there forever but her parents died and left her their home so she moved into that but she totally repainted the place and I know she left it better than when she first moved in I didn't have to do anything but put a for rent sign out on the road Dan and Marcina even though I'd have to help them out a little they were nice they were friendly they paid their rent on time and they never complained and David he was no maintenance guy that's for sure bachelor probably 35 years old a couple months after we sold the place we came up on a stop sign there were cop cars everywhere what's going on we, we detoured around went home and started watching the news and what had happened is a motorcycle was coming up over the viaduct over the highway there very very fast the cop car looked both ways didn't see him coming pulled out in front of him that bike hit that cop car and killed the bike rider immediately. That was David, my old tenant. Makes me sad to this day even thinking about that. David was a good guy. Be kind even when you don't feel like being kind. That's the way you should be. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.